If you're like me, you probably associate fresh fruit with summertime where you've got stone fruit like peaches and cherries, or you've got berries going boysenberries and blackberries and things. And then fall hits and you've got some apples that come on, but then those are done and you are left with a couple of exciting options, one of which is the persimmon. I'm Cameron, welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk through the difference between two different main types of persimmons, the Fuyu persimmon and the Hachia persimmon. Let's get busy. Well, the persimmon is a really interesting and unique kind of fruit. It's been cultivated for over 2000 years, originated in Asia. And so it's been in China for that long. It then went to Japan and that's where we've gotten our most common varieties. But I think China still accounts for something like 75% of all persimmon exports in the world. This tree, it's a deciduous tree and it's hardy in zones eight to 11. And so it can grow in a pretty wide variety of climates. Persimmons are generally broken up into two main categories. And that's that's what we're going to talk about today and that's the astringent types of fruit and the non-astringent type of fruit. Astringency is that flavor, that feeling, that sensation on your tongue that you get when you bite into like a banana peel. Have you ever done that to try to break one open on an unripe banana peel and you go and it immediately gets, it's not tart, it just makes your tongue feel almost dry. And it's really weird. The most popular astringent variety that's usually grown is what's called the Hachia persimmon and that's a Japanese cultivar and that's what I have here at my dad's house. He has a Hachia persimmon and I have a Fuyu growing in my house so I brought this. It's called a giant Fuyu. I brought this from my house to show you the difference between these two. Okay so as I came to my dad's I thought oh I hope he's got some persimmons still on his tree and I saw that big one over there and I thought oh that's great there's finally a persimmon but then as I went over I noticed that that thing had been pecked by birds and he lost a lot of fruit to birds this year. They love it almost as much as we do. But then I spotted one last one that's in actually the Hachia persimmon shape up there, that characteristic acorn shape. So I'm gonna pick it to show you. Hey, now would be a great time to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that join button below. See if there's a Busy Gardener membership option that works well for you. We've got some awesome perks that are part of that. And thank you those who are Busy Gardener members already. You guys energize me to keep going. Okay, here we have a Fuyu persimmon and a Hachia persimmon. And when you look at them, there are some similarities, similar coloring, similar skin type. The tops of it both have this kind of similar crown that is there with these leaves, but that's really where the similarities end. These two fruit couldn't be more different. Probably the most obvious visual difference between the two is the Hachia is shaped a lot more like an acorn and the Fuyu is a lot more squat, almost like a donut or more like a pumpkin. So if it's an acorn, it probably is a Hachia. If it's squat like this, it's probably a Fuyu. The Hachia is a astringent type of persimmon which again is that banana peel flavor. If I were to bite into this fruit right now, my mouth would feel totally dry and I would not be able to taste anything right for the next 30 minutes. Whereas the Fuyu persimmon is non-astringent and that means that you can eat the persimmon, the Fuyu persimmon and other non-astringent persimmons from this kind of firm ripeness all the way through when they get more soft. Now, both of these persimmons will sweeten up as they ripen and they can ripen off of the tree. So it's okay to cut both of these off. But I wanna talk through the two different ways to eat these persimmon. Okay, so we've got our persimmon. Get out of here. <laughs> she gone. The first is the Fuyu persimmon. And this is, tr treat this almost like an apple without a pit in it or a core in it. And so you can just take and begin slicing off a piece of the persimmon. And you'll notice that the persimmon has kind of some darker color. The darker a persimmon is, the better it's gonna be, the more ripe it is. And the softer it is, is usually, usually an indicator that it's ripened up. Mm. And so you can eat a persimmon with the skin and the flavor is all there. Now, it's not an entirely flavorful fruit. The persimmon, these two have some differences in flavor but it's pleasant, it's not overpowering. So if you don't like a very persimmony fruit, then, then you probably will like the Fuyu. So you can either eat it fresh like this, or what sometimes people will do is they will dry them, like I've done here. And so I've got some Fuyu persimmon almost turned into like Fuyu persimmon chips. Really tasty, leathery, but they break apart. They're not very tough like an apricot, so 
That's kind of one nice thing about the persimmon. It's not a very, very tough fruit to eat. All right, now I have this hachia persimmon. And unlike the fuyu persimmon that I just had, the hachia persimmon should not be eaten when it's hard like this. You want the hachia persimmon to be entirely squishy. Think of almost like a honey-filled water balloon. And I actually have one that uh, have been ripening up. I'm gonna tell you in a little bit how to ripen these really easily, but you want it to be very, very squishy before you do anything with it. The hachia persimmon, when you take and you want it to ripen, let's say you take it and pick it off the tree when it's firm, you want to leave it on the tree for as long as you can, but once you take it off, you want to take it and set it, like even on a windowsill that's not getting any sort of sun or anything, and just set it on its crown. This can support the entire thing, and you wait for it, and you'll notice the color difference between these two. The ripe persimmon is much darker, much more red than the unripe persimmon. So you're really looking for this reddish orange and a very, very squishy part. And this means that it's ripe and ready to use. There are two ways that I know that are really easy to use for a hachia persimmon. One of those is to eat it fresh. And that means you pop open, open this top and you take your spoon and you begin just scooping it out like jello. It's really good. Something I also like to do with these in the same way eating them fresh is to take and freeze these. And then what I do is I will unfreeze them all, put them in the microwave for 10 seconds or something just to soften them slightly. And it's almost like a sherbet. So I kind of like that method. There's a little pro tip. The other thing though that these hachia persimmons are used for is for baking. So when you're seeing persimmon bread and persimmon cookies and things like that, usually you're using a hachia persimmon. Hachia persimmon has a much stronger persimmon flavor and it has a much stronger uh, level of sweetness. And so if you're wanting a very sweet piece of fruit and willing to wait for it to ripen, hachia persimmon is the way to go. Okay, so as I take the top off of this, you see it kind of when it's really ripe, it ends up being kind of a, a big gooey mess. You know, it's funny, my wife does not like this and I think it's a texture thing for her. This is just nasty slime. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it's sweet, tasty goodness, so. If the cap comes off like that, or you just take the, can we think you can put this in a cup too? But it comes out almost like a little jello. It's like a God-made jello cup. A lot of times people didn't even know that there's more than one type of persimmon and they both grow really equally well in the climates that they're good in. So if you're wanting something that's ooey, gooey, very sweet, but also run the risk of it being astringent, plant a hachia. If you want something that you're never gonna run into astringency and you want something that's more mild flavored and something that's a little bit more firm flesh than plant a fuyu. I appreciate you tuning into this episode of The Busy Gardener where we walked through the two main differences between the two main types of persimmons. Hey, whether you got one persimmon that you're wanting to harvest or 500, until next time, stay busy.